Hello again. We're going to discuss section 10.5, which talks about how to measure energy changes. So we talked about kind of the fundamentals of energy and what it is, and now we're going to discuss how to calculate it within uh, a chemical reaction. So let's first talk about some common units of energy. First one is the calorie. This is the amount of energy, or heat, that is required to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius. So we're looking at just water here. So if you took a gram and you heated it up by one degree C, this would be the amount. Food calories, if you look at like the back of a nutrition label, is in um, kilocalories. Because calories are quite small. And so this will be shown as a capital C. And by the way, for water, it's 4.18. Um, joules per gram degree C. So we'll talk about the joule, um, but this is where calories are coming from. Okay, so the joule is the SI unit for energy. So it represents it's the unit that we use to represent energy. So that's why our calories are um, can be expressed also in joules. And one calorie is 4.184 joules. So what we just talked about up there is right here. And then we've got our per, per gram degree Celsius because it was one gram of water and one degree Celsius. So it's based on water. Okay, so let's um, do an example. We're going to express 60.1 calories of energy in units of joules. Okay, so we're going to start with our 60.1 calories. And we can set up our railroad tracks to convert. And we know based on... Up here, that for one calorie, we have 4.184 joules. Okay, so for every one calorie, there are 4.184 joules. Okay, so take your calculator. Because things are on top, you're going to multiply. So we're going to take 60.1 times 4.184, and we get 251. 0.4584 joules. Uh, based on this problem, we want three significant figures. So one, two, three. The four isn't going to do anything to the one, so our answer is 251 joules is in 60.1 calories. All right, so let's look how this relates to mass and temperature. If you have something that you are um, trying to add energy to, if you double the mass and you want to maintain the same temperature change, it's going to take twice as much energy to do that. Okay, same is true if you have a constant mass, but you want to double the temperature. It's going to take twice as much energy in order to double, to raise that temperature by that amount. So what that means is that energy, or heat, required to change the temperature of a substance depends on two things. Depends on the amount, usually we're talking number of grams, but we could also be talking about number of moles. And we're also talking about um, the temperature change, or the number of degrees that you want to raise or lower your temperature. So those two things determine the amount of heat required. This involves what's also called specific heat capacity. Okay, this The energy to raise the temperature of something also depends on its identity. Now we talked about water, but not everything heats up as quickly or as slowly in some cases as water. So that's where specific heat capacity comes in. We know that for water, it takes 4.184 joules of energy to raise one gram of water by one degree Celsius. However, for gold, it only takes 0.13 joules. So it's a lot smaller. It doesn't take as much energy. Part of this has to do with the way that water is bonded versus gold as the element. Okay? And it, so it takes a lot less energy to increase the heat or to raise the temperature of gold. So this is specific heat capacity. It's the amount of energy required to change the temperature of one gram of something by one degree Celsius. Okay, and so each different compound is going to have a different specific heat capacity. And you can find a lot of these on table 10.1 in your book on page 297. Or they'll be given to you in the problem. Or you might solve for it given other conditions. So let's look at how you might solve for it. So if you want to find the energy or the heat required to heat something up or to increase the temperature, you need the mass because we said that depends on mass. You need the specific heat capacity because we said it depends on identity. And you need the change in temperature. Now, if your heat capacity is in degrees Celsius, then you need your temperature in degrees Celsius. So it's just important to look at your units. So here's our equation. 
Q represents heat or energy. Whoops. Okay, so Q, whoop, not that either. So this is our energy. Here's our mass. C is going to represent specific heat capacity. And here's our change in temperature. Okay, so if specific heat capacity is in grams and degrees Celsius, it's usually what a joule per gram degree C, then we need our mass in grams and we need our temperature in Celsius. So just pay attention to your units. Okay, so let's look at an example using that equation. So we want to determine the amount of heat, so we're looking for Q in joules, required to raise the temperature of 7.4 grams, so we know mass equals 7.40 grams, and this is water, from an initial temperature of 29 degrees C to a final temperature of 46 degrees Celsius. Well, we know that Q equals M C delta T. We're missing our heat capacity. We know for water that specific heat capacity is 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. So if we take a look at our units, all of our units look okay. So we can go ahead and plug in. So we know our mass is 7.40 grams. Our heat capacity is 4.184 joules per gram degrees Celsius and our delta T change is always final minus initial. So we're going to take off our final temperature first which is 46 minus our initial temperature which is 29. Okay and now all we have to do is plug that in. So I'm going to take 7.4 times 4.184 times 46 minus 29 and I get 526.35. Let's look at units. Grams on top, grams on the bottom. Degrees Celsius on top, degrees Celsius on the bottom. I'm left with joules. Last thing I need to do is significant figures. I look back into the problem. All of my numbers have three significant figures. So that's what I want in my answer. So I'm going to round here. Three is not going to do anything to the six. So my answer is 526 joules. Okay. Let's take a look at another example. So we want to know what quantity of energy, so Q equals, is required to heat a piece of iron weighing 1.3 grams from 25 degrees C to 46 degrees C. And our heat capacity, or C, is 1.45 joules per gram degree Celsius. Well, I know Q equals mc delta T. So I've got 1.3 grams times my heat capacity for iron, which is 1.45 joules per gram degree C. Delta T is final minus initial. Okay, if I calculate, because all my units look good, 1.3 times 1.45 times the quantity 46 minus 25, I get 39.585, 39, 38, okay, just like before, grams cancel, 3C cancel, I'm left with joules, last thing I need to do is significant figures, here I'm seeing a smallest amount of 2, now the 5 is going to round this up, so this becomes 40, if I want two significant figures, I either need a decimal point here, or I need to write it as 4.0 times 10 to the first. Both of those answers would be acceptable, because they both have two significant figures. Okay, what if I wanted the answer in calories? So let's take my 40 joules, okay, and I know that one calorie is 4.18, 4.184 joules. So joules go on the bottom, so I'm going to divide. So take my 40 divided by 4.184 and that gives me 9.46. Well again, two significant figures. The 6 will round the 4, so I get 9.5 calories. Okay, so we will go over some more examples in class. Otherwise, Here's what you can get started on. Have a good day.